Today, I'm going to be telling you about my experience with the Canon EOS R8 over the past six months, and everything you need to know about this camera before you pick it up. So, let's get into it. First off, let's talk about the build quality of the R8. Now, so far, I haven't had one single issue with this camera, whether it be physical or software based, other than overheating. This isn't necessarily a build quality issue, but it is a problem that you will run into when you're recording 4K60 video for over 20 minutes. About 20 to 25 minutes, the camera will shut down unless you have it really cold. And even then, recording 4K60 video, the battery will only last for about 40 minutes before it shuts off. But in most conditions, 4K30 works well, and I haven't had any issues with 1080p resolution up to 180 frames a second. So other than that, not really any issues with this camera. So let's move on to the main features of this camera, like the full frame image sensor. The R8 has the same sensor from the R6 Mark II, so a 26 megapixel full frame sensor, but it lacks some of the extra features that that sensor has. So no built-in stabilization and only first curtain electronic shutter. And this results in only six frames a second mechanical shutter instead of the 12 that the R6 Mark II has. But because it's full frame, it is a massive advantage in low light performance. For example, you can push this camera well above 12 1800 ISO and still have it relatively clean versus the Canon R7 which completely falls apart at those higher ISOs. So if low light performance is something very important to you, definitely get the R8. Now there are a lot of features that the R8 does not have that the R7 and the R6 do. The big one of which is the smaller battery. The R8 uses the Canon LPE17 batteries found in other cameras like the R10, the R50, the R100, the smaller cheaper cameras. And this is a much much smaller battery than the LPE6 battery found in the Canon R7. Now these cameras, the R8 and R7, are priced the same, and this is why I'm comparing them so similarly. Because they're priced the same, they have different advantages and disadvantages. So basically what the R8 has, the R7 does not. And what the R7 has, the R8 does not. And if you want both the features from both the cameras, well, there's the R6 Mark II. So the smaller battery in the R8 is a downside and can only last for about two hours, maybe four hours for photos, and for about 45 minutes when recording video solidly. Unlike the R7, which lasts for about two hours for video and about eight hours for photos. So if battery life is something that is extremely important to you, definitely get the R7. But always remember that you can just buy more batteries, you don't have to just use one battery. I have made it by with just one Canon battery for the R8, but that's because I've always had the R7 with me. So if the R8 dies, I'll just switch over. But if the R8 is your only camera, I would highly recommend getting at least one, maybe two extra batteries for this camera. So that's just something to consider with a price point. Remember, each battery is going to be around $40 to $60. So let's move on to some of the other features that the R8 does not have that some of the other cameras do. So the next thing is the redundant SD card slots. So the R8 only has one SD card slot versus the R7, the R6, the R5, which all have two media formats, either SD or CF Express, something like that, that can do redundant recording. So you only can put one SD SD card in this camera. Personally, I've never had a corrupted file out of this camera, so it hasn't been a big issue for me. But I would recommend always to get the best SD cards you can. So definitely pick up cards from Angel Bird or SanDisk or ProGrade, and you shouldn't have any issues that way. So if you're okay with a smaller battery and only one SD card, there's not much you're going to be missing out versus the other cameras in a similar price range. Now let's move on to the image performance. Because the R8 has the same sensor from the R6 Mark II, the footage looks amazing. But because it is a smaller camera, you're lacking that 6K raw output. So it's just going to be IPB and IPB light compression. And you can use C-Log3. So if you're comfortable with grading, I would highly recommend that. Now again, because this camera doesn't have any built-in stabilization, this can be an issue. But if you get a stabilized lens, this shouldn't be a problem at all. Other than that, there's not a ton to talk about about this camera. It's Canon camera in the R system. So we got the same flip out screen. We got the same dials on the top. We are lacking the joystick. So if you use that a ton in your current camera, you will be lacking that. Now, if you have any questions about this camera, let me know in the comment section down below and I will answer every comment. That's gonna be it for today's video, but before we go, I wanna tell you about our sponsor, Artlist. If you're creative like myself on YouTube or even have a large production company, you're going to need stock assets such as music, sound effects, and footage. And Artlist is the best place to get that. With different plans stemming from just music to Artlist Max with everything you need, Artlist is the place to go. If you wanna get two months for free, 
free on your annual subscription, check out the link below. Thank you to Artlist for supporting the channel and back to the video. Congratulations, you made it to the end of the video and that's awesome. If you wanna hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, that would help out a ton. And if you wanna watch another video, there's one right over here and two below me. And let us know in the comment section down below what videos we should make next.